Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Welcome back to another one of our YouTube lessons. If you are here for the first time, follow along and hopefully you will enjoy the channel. What I plan to do in this lesson is to cover a very exciting and sort of maybe not so often covered topic which is the ability to compose or create and understand non-diatonic chord progressions. That's chord progressions which don't use a scale for their formation. You don't, you know, write down the major scale or the minor scale and then, you know, do your usual triad formation technique and so on. So this is a little bit different. It uses a few techniques which you probably already know and a lot of techniques which apply pretty much just common sense if you think about it and basic music theory but hopefully in this exploration you'll have some different ideas and some strategies which you may like but have not necessarily found in a traditional music theory uh, setup and I have five patterns or five techniques for you there are quite a few more but otherwise this video would be like an epic video it will be really long so uh, I figured we'll just limit our study to five okay guys uh, before we get cracking it'll be great if you can hit that bell icon uh, for regular notifications whenever we release uh, regular YouTube videos. You'll also find the notes for this lesson as well as other lessons in the past available on our Patreon along with backing tracks, MIDI files and staff notation. You may want to check out our Patreon page. What I plan to do for the study is to basically take random chords or different starting points. We'll not limit our study to a particular key because it's a non-diatonic setup, right? So to get started, the first approach for building non-diatonic chord progressions would be line cliche descending movements. And most of this chapter, when you say non-diatonic chord progressions, you're also entering into the world of making super long chord progressions as well. The chord, The length of the progression will be quite long. It could be even uh, 12 chords long or maybe more. So if you start with a simple G minor chord, G B flat D or B flat D G or D G B flat, either way, a nice way to build up chord progressions considering that when our human ear processes this sound, we are not hearing the triad only. We are hearing the triad with its conforming bass right so in the case of a G minor for you to truly feel the G minor you need to have a G in the bass otherwise it could pretty much be anything for example if you take G minor over F sharp or if you take G minor over F G minor over E G minor over E flat G minor over D and then G, G minor over C sharp, G minor over D, and so on and so forth. So you see what's happening. The, there is a harmonic motion created just by a dynamic flow of the left hand. And the right hand or the treble area, depending on which instrument you play, is pretty much static. It's the same triad, our good old G minor chord, which I'm considering for this example. Right? So let's figure that out. So if you take... G minor, let's say in some inversion, whichever inversion you like, you you can play around with this, as we call it, line cliche movement. So you're not really sticking to a scale. In fact, I'm going to explore this by moving chromatically down from G. It's just going to move chromatically down and you'll have G, G, F sharp, G over F, G minor over F, G minor over D. G minor over E flat, G minor over D, G minor over C sharp, G minor over D. Now let's also study the chords. So vanilla G minor and then now this is a G minor but with a very prominent F sharp in the sense it's an F sharp chord, right? We just don't have a, a name for it. We, we don't have a theoretical name and it's not really used in a scale context, right? But I'm sure you know that famous songs which use this. We have Stairway to Heaven, which clearly uses this concept. A lot of ballads. 
diets can be made using this sequence and it's not really diatonic if you think about it which scale is this part of in which scale do we get to use all the 12 notes well you could call it the chromatic scale i guess so anyway so let's try and work that out together you have g minor g g minor over f sharp you have a g minor over f yes you may want to call it by fancy names but isn't it simple to just relate to it as a slash chord right g minor over f and then you have a tensed up chord you have that tritone created with the e it also creates a minor 7th flat 5 sound there we go minor 7th flat 5 not to be confused with diminished 7th which is a completely di different chord right i've done a video on exploring diminished chords you should check it out on our channel uh, we've uh, gone quite in depth with pretty much all these chords as individual units i even have a series called my favorite chords of all time where some of these single chords are explored in its entirety how i've used them in some of my songs and so on and so forth so na da 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 g minor over f Now G minor over E. Now G minor over E flat. You might argue that's an E flat major seven. And then G minor over D. Now G minor, even though D is part of the G minor chord, it's a very very different vibe when you press D in the bass. It's not like a traditional inversion. It's a slash chord. So a G minor over D is going to not sound. like a resolution it's not going to sound stable right it wants to resolve it, it, it's it's yearning to resolve and that's g minor over c sharp and then d seventh and then we drop let's do let's do that again the last chord maybe i could play a d7 at the end to kind of pull it back the d7 is like a magnetic chord it wants to get you back to the key g minor in this case right some form of g right even though you don't you've not committed to a scale like g natural minor or g harmonic minor you're still in the key of g so it's nice to be in the key of g but not committing to a specific g scale if you will right again and the blues scale also works very well here this scale minor blues will work really well root flat 3 perfect 4 flat 5 major uh, perfect 5th flat 7 octave now you don't have to go chromatically downward you can just play around with this concept you know you can go Just do four of those chords. Na 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 na. Da de do 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 de do do. Da 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 do de do do do. It's a lot of fun when you play it down. So I'd encourage you to try this with pretty much any minor chord. So in this case, G minor. You could also do it with B minor. much any chord really so that was line cliche descending over a minor chord let me quickly show you how this would sound with a major chord so i'm just going to choose a major chord a major uh, out of the hat of major chords 
I'm taking A major and do the same example. Na 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 na. Now the challenge with just a single A major, for some reason the minors hold their weight. The major chords don't sound really good with all the chromatic notes in the left, uh, in the bass register. So I have a modification. Let me just guide you through the chords. So A major, oh, 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 oh A major over G sharp, and A over G. Oh, oh, oh. now A major. Over F sharp is fine, but you could also do like a D major over F sharp, ta da da. D minor over F, ta da. A over E, ba da di. B over D sharp, and then the dominant of A is E that takes or pulls us back to A. Yeah, I'm in the key of A, but I might argue back and say yes, maybe. But I'm not using only the A major seven notes, right? I'm using everything. I'm using all the chromatic notes uh, available to us. Let's play that again and again. I'm sure you're getting like the the something by the Beatles vibe. You will get a lot of popular. Song vibes by doing this. this is actually a very popular progression. Okay, let's let's do that again. Na 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 na. I'm changing it every na 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 every bar. Na 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 ru ru. Na na na. this uh, movement was the line cliche going chromatically down and we could take a major chord we could take a minor chord i started with a g minor and then we moved to an a major you can do it with anything and i'd encourage you to make a melody like these progressions beg a melody to be created along with them you can't just play the chords and end it there you need to make a tune okay guys so moving on to the second way to create non diatonic progressions this is no rocket science the line cliche thing moved bass down now i'm going to go chromatically bass up okay to create well a very similar uh, kind of vibe now to do this what i have for you uh, a concept which i'd like to share with you is a scale even though i said non diatonic but there is one scale which is you need to know in order to form this stuff it's called the whole tone scale so i'm going to show you two whole tone scales if i do it from the key of d flat so what is a whole tone it's just a succession of whole tones whole tone from d flat that's a skip of uh, two steps right continue till you reach the top if you hold on your pedal it sounds quite enchanting i guess right anyway so not that you have to play that scale but you can visualize the scale maybe a couple of whole tones d flat whole tone and c whole tone 
and incidentally all these whole tone scales are inversions of each other so that means you can yeah c whole tone is also d whole tone you just start with d since you're just populating the movement in tones and you'll end up getting a six note scale not a seven note scale conventionally you'll get a six note scale okay so what you do is at each whole tone point you you can either play a major chord or a minor chord so let me build d flat whole tone in chords d flat e flat f g a b d flat or c sharp na 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 ha 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 can do that with major you can also do it with minor so that's c sharp minor d sharp minor or e flat minor f minor G minor, A minor, B minor, C sharp minor. Now, it sounds a bit uh, unclear, right? It's just random major and minor chords. Yes, they are connected in a nice ladder-like motion, but it doesn't sound usable. So, to make this usable, you need to add some tension because all these chords. Uh, believe it or not are very peaceful resolutions right so there's no context there's no story because you just have like a very standard stable sound uh, albeit it's uh, out of the scale but it's still very stable you're just playing major and uh, minor chords so what we do with this strategy is you tell yourself as you're approaching this the next chord what we call as the target chord if you take d flat and then target e flat you need to squeeze in or sneak in a chord uh, before or bit in between d flat and e flat these are my two roots so <clears throat> what do i sneak in well first of all i can play a d bass because it's a nice uh, ladder like motion Okay. But then how do I give this D context? I don't want to do you know, it sounds kind of cool, but yeah, it it doesn't sound usable like in a ballad context or in a regular popish context. So instead of doing like a D major or D minor, here's what you do. You ask yourself, what is the fifth of E flat? Okay? And the fifth of E flat happens to be what e flat f g a flat b flat this is where the knowledge of the circle of fifths comes in very handy try to check out some of my circle of fifths videos you'll get a lot of resources to build it for scales for chords for improv for intervals and what not so you ask yourself so my target chord is e flat what precedes it it's fifth what is the fifth of e flat b flat so you play the fifth dominant chord because the these these chords are sevenths or major dominant chords so you go d flat i want to go to e flat let's go through the the tunnel or through the uh, open the door so to speak with the b flat b flat gives you the context to go to e flat major and now e flat actually behaves as home you know so d flat b flat e flat now to make this even more smoother you can do d flat b flat over d and e flat so that creates pum 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 let's do that again d flat na na and the beauty here is remember what i told you these target chords of the whole tone scale can either be major or minor so can do a minor there or okay moving forward after e flat comes f in the whole tone right now you ask yourself in between e flat and f there's e that's going to be your bass note na, 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 na. now e is your bass but then what triad or what dominant chord will go to f that will be the fifth of f which is c there we go now it immediately pulls you to the f minor or pulls you to the f major la da, 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 da. 
so so far we have la da da de de la da de da de da 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 do now i want to go to g my next landing again the chromatic between f and g is f sharp na 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 that's what did i do there i did d major d seventh with an f sharp a do 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 g minor now i want to go to a how do i do that via its fifth that's e seventh with a g sharp bass na 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 a minor and then i want to go to b what's b's fifth f sharp right but i need an a sharp bass for a chromatic passing so na 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 and now why don't i end with the d flat what's d flat's fifth a flat so i would do a flat with a chromatic in between bass which is a flat over c and d flat i've got this written down neatly on our patreon page do consider getting yourself a copy of the notes you can visualize these movements a lot better with my colors and all the, all of the fancy things which i do on the on the app so you go let's do the whole thing again with only major chords with the chromatic passing bass chord so okay i'll call it out as i play d flat B flat over D, E flat major, C major over E, F major, D major over F sharp, G major, E major over G sharp, A major, F sharp major over A flat. Uh, F sharp major over A sharp or B flat B major A flat over C and end with D flat so you've ascended chromatically right again uh, let's do this with minor chords why not da de do 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 E flat minor la da do 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 then of course if you if major and minor both work in that whole tone movement why can't you combine them you can do major minor and what not i i've also written it for c you should probably practice the same motion on c and if anything you will be a, a very good chord player your inversions your ear sometimes you need to play chords i, I instinctively you have a melody line which is going a certain way and your chords need to just happen you know so these skills will help you because you're doing endless resolution tension resolution tension resolution let's do it on c and then move to the next point so c a over c sharp d ta da 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 do 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 C you can start with D flat and you can start with C. So this was the second kind of non diatonic chord progression creation process. Uh, this uses a, a chromatic ascending. We call the concept as secondary dominance. There are a lot of videos on that as well on our YouTube channel. Do check them out. So in this method of using non diatonic chord progressions, I have chosen our best friend, the circle of fifths. and the circle of fifths yes it's used to detect scales and to find you know the fact that you know this scale is similar to the previous scale or the next scale because of the key signatures then some people draw relative minors and stuff like that well that's fine but you can throw most of that out out the window and just keep the points that c g d a e b f sharp d flat a flat e flat d flat f c so keep those 12 points draw the circle neatly and see what happens if you move well clockwise and counterclockwise so if you move for instance clockwise you go c g d a e b f sharp d flat a flat now what's happening here 
every resolution c is the fourth of the g so we call that actually a plagal cadence plagal is 4 going to 1 na 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 ro 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 na 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 and a great chord progression or a usable chord progression needs to also support a melody line which will eventually happen so great to start with cadences but to make this non diatonic i'm going to keep going down the circle or up the circle however you look at it so c going to g na 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 clockwise na 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 so using c g d a i've got like a melody line enjoying this actually maybe we should build a song on this right so the plagal cadence goes ascending or clockwise circle in fourths you could think about it because c is the uh, is the fourth of g right it's resolving so g c is the fourth c resolves to g it's called the plagal cadence or the amen cadence used a lot in gospel music then you can also go in the other direction in the 51 direction which is the counter clockwise direction what we call as the authentic cadence or the perfect cadence okay so if you take reverse circle c f b flat e flat a flat d flat f sharp b major A D G C. It's a good exercise also to practice your chords. What I like about the authentic movement is you don't have to just do major major. You can do even like minor major. C minor seventh, F dominant, B flat major seventh, E flat, A flat major seventh, D flat major seventh, F dominant, F sharp dominant. all dominants minor a major 7th dominant and uh, you could fool around with the chords it doesn't have to be major and minor right so plagal cadence circle is the circle of fifths going clockwise the authentic or the perfect cadence is the circle of fifths going counter clockwise so that's how you could use the circle of fifths now the fourth strategy is still the circle of fifths but i encourage you to visualize it in geometrical shapes instead of just moving it you know clockwise so what are the most common geometrical shapes known to human kind apart from a circle of course you could argue an equilateral triangle or a square if you flip a square you're going to get a diamond i guess that's what we call it right so if you visualize those shapes you'll realize you can easily draw them if you draw the circle of fifths neatly so i encourage you to draw it neatly or get my notes so what i like about it when you draw it well is you can visualize the equilateral triangles either this way or you know this way depending on where you start where the point of interest is you can visualize a square or a diamond again depending on where you start and you'll realize that there will be four triangles which are possible so to form a triangle it's great to visualize the circle of fifths and skip four o'clock each so if you take c how do we skip four o'clock well one o'clock is g two o'clock is d three o'clock is a four o'clock is e so that's also the major third so if you want to ignore the whole going 4 o'clock kind of thing just look at it as c's major third is e and e's major third or e's 4 o'clock in the circle is either g sharp or a flat so this is my triangle chord also known as an augmented chord so what you do is you form these various triangles you can do the d triangle d f sharp and uh, b flat then you could do the d flat triangle 
which is D flat F and A, also D flat augmented. Then you can do the E flat triangle, E flat G B. <clears throat> so once you have these uh, three or this, the trios of uh, the triangle ready, then what you can do is just play them in a kind of a random sequence as you feel fit. But replace each of the points of the triangle instead of just playing C, E, G sharp. You can make it as a C chord, an E chord and a G sharp chord. Check that out. Maybe C major, E major and A flat major and kind of group them, play them together. That's the triangle of it's created with C, E, and G sharp, right? Maybe try some minor chords. You get into a very movie theme like territory. All found by just taking the circle forming some triangles or writing the augmented trio or triads and uh, playing them as major or minor chords. Okay, so what comes after triangles? Well, you may be guessing it. Why not do a set of four? So set of three will give you an equilateral triangle if you draw the circle well. A set of four will give you a square. So for a set of four and to build squares or uh, diamonds, you would be going three o'clock from a target note. So C to G1, G to D2, D to A3, right? So you do C to A and then the same procedure. You can also go counterclockwise by three o'clock to create the same deal, right? You're moving clockwise three or counterclockwise three, you'll come back or you'll arrive at the same conclusion of four chords or four notes in that uh, squarish shape. So C down three o'clock would be what now? F, B flat, E flat. So you do C major, 3 o'clock, E flat major. Now what's 3 o'clock from E flat? F sharp. What's 3 o'clock from F sharp? A. So C, E flat, F sharp, A. And again I'm playing these as major or minor chords. major in this case you can go in reverse order and actually this is forming diminished seventh of a family of a, dim, a diminished seventh chord so how many notes do we have in music 12 how many are already paired up or ganged up now in this uh, square shape four so that means you're going to have three squares which will give you Family, three families of diminished seventh chords and you will have four triangles which are going to give you four families of augmented triads or trios so to speak right guys so that was about using the circle of fifths intervillically if you want to call it that to form chord progressions which are by no means diatonic i have one more strategy for you to do non-diatonic chord progressions and this is probably the first thing i ever did and i think i did this by luck during my college days or maybe school days wherein i just told myself okay i have a i have a note c what chords go with C? And at that time, I only knew a few chords. I knew the majors and the minors. So I would, you know, question that, okay, and say, okay, what has C in it? C major, C minor, obviously, right? Then you have maybe F major, which has C at the fifth, <clears throat> F minor, which has C at the fifth, super easy. So C is there in C major, C minor, C is there in F major, F minor, C is also in the middle of a major chord and it's in the middle note of a minor chord. What is it in the middle of A flat major, right? A flat C, E flat. C is in the middle. And it's in the middle of the A minor chord. Where again C is in the middle. So I told myself, okay, <clears throat> why not build a chord progression where C is the pivotal point of my melody <clears throat> and then C will linger throughout at the strong beat and then why not just bring in all the six 
chords which are three major and three minor which are all part of the tree of c so to speak it's the c tree and the branches of c seem to have all these triads which have c in it obviously so i can build a melody na 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 sounds diatonic na 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 that's not diatonic na 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 as you can see i anchored my entire melody around c and i ended up getting six chords which work their magic now this is just one tree remember in a jungle there are way more than one tree so if you imagine a dynamic creature like a monkey moving through a, a dense uh, jungle or a forest you will assume that this individual is going to climb across a bunch of trees and go to whatever branch they want to have fun latching on to climbing and doing what they whatever they want to do on that branch right so in this visualization the tree is a note it could be c d e f g a b uh, c sharp a flat whatever and when you jump on that tree you you have to cling on to a branch right the branch is the chord and then you have multiple branches multiple chords and then on the branch you're going to make a melody line around that chord and then maybe jump to the next chord of the same tree or the chord of a next tree or another tree now if this visualization was confusing we do have a lot of options to learn this stuff we teach sort of contemporary and compositionally driven theory at our school so you can learn these concepts in a structured step by step foundational till the very advanced stages and this is primarily aimed to give you results so you may want to consider something regular or we have other videos which we've linked up covering a lot of these subjects so what i've done in this lesson is something also which could be looked at as a revision of sorts of a lot of other lessons which i have done maybe spanning about 3 to 4 years of us doing this channel you know regularly and hopefully you can take something along with this lesson so we have line clichés going downward chromatically either with major or so we have line clichés going down chromatically you can take a minor chord in this case g minor or a major chord a major and then you have the other form of climbing which is climbing this way using secondary chords which are the secondary chords are in between the whole tone families or the whole tone set of six notes and uh, yeah that adds a dominant resolution which makes that pull stronger adds the tension and resolution and thus the context then we looked at two strategies using circle of fifths first we went up and down uh, you go up clockwise you're going to do the plagal movement you're going to you do the counter clockwise you're going to get that 5 to 1 authentic cadence movement then we can also do circle of fifths which shapes and get very movie like uh sounding chord progressions very alien progressions if you use that word um you can build triangle shapes and diamond shapes those are simple and last but not least we looked at this whole visualization of chord trees where you throw away the scale you just bring in a note into the party that becomes a tree and then all its branches are the chords which have a note in common or which have one of the notes of that tree right and then you switch trees and that's i think a topic for a future video for sure right guys again this is jason zack from nathaniel a couple of things you could consider doing before i sign off hit the subscribe button if you haven't already don't worry we don't spam you we just release new videos pretty much every day so that might help you get regular notifications and stay alive on our channel and we want to hear from you as well so give the video a like 
leave us a comment with what you thought about this lesson and uh, what what you'd like to learn in a future lesson do consider sharing the video with your musician friends and family and if you'd like to learn something regular as a detailed semester at our school do consider going to nathanielschool.com and uh, last but not least all the notes from this lesson and everything we will continue to do and what we have done in the past are waiting for you on patreon for just 5 dollars a month cheers guys this is jason zack